Hello Year 4, welcome to Week 2. We're going to be starting our unit of work today called Under the Sea and we're going to start off by learning how to draw some simple fish and sea creatures in the water and then we're going to be using those things that we've learnt to complete a major artwork at the end of the term. So we're going to start off today by drawing a very simple and familiar fish called the clownfish. I'm sure you're familiar with this from the movie Finding Nemo. Um, and the most important thing today is that you learn a few techniques, a few drawing techniques that you can apply to different things that you'll draw. So firstly, let's go through a few things that we need today so that you've got everything with you. You'll need some water and a paintbrush. You'll need the watercolours that you picked up from school. You'll need a pencil and an eraser. Of course, you'll need your art diary. And I think that's about it. So if you want to pause the video and get those things so that you're ready to go, that would be great. Now, the drawing technique that we're going to use today is one where we split our page into, into quarters and we use that as a guide so that we get the dimensions of whatever we're drawing um, just right and it also helps when you're trying to get a little bit of symmetry. So when you want the top to be similar in size um, and similar to what you've drawn in the top and in the bottom. So... I don't necessarily want you to draw straight lines and make it completely perfect. Sometimes when I'm trying to find the halfway point, I simply use my hands and I splay them at about the same on each side and I place them onto my piece of paper and where my thumbs join is where the middle of my page is. So I'll show you. So where my thumbs, where my thumbs joined there, that was the middle vertical line. And for the horizontal line, a little bit easier, we can just simply fold our page. And just make sure you sketch in that line. I'm sketching quite dark so you can see, but remember when you're sketching to do nice light sketches and when we start drawing our fish, um, if we're drawing a nice big line, don't feel like you've got to commit to drawing that line in one go. Use those nice light sketches to get the curves just right and then that way if you make a mistake, it's so much easier to erase your work and make corrections. So now that we've got our page into four squares, I'm going to start by doing a rough outline of the clownfish. So you can see I've done a little curved line on the right hand side of my page. And then I've come up from there. And once I hit that halfway mark, I'm going to start coming back down. And then we're going to go back up for the tail. But I'll explain that as I go. So starting to head back, starting to head back down. Now you can, you can see I've stopped short of hitting the line. I could probably fit two or three fingers in there. And then I'm going to start coming back up for the tail. So you can see there, I've got the outline for the top of my fish. And now it should be easier for you to do the bottom. And you want it to be pretty much exactly the same size, but it doesn't matter too much if you don't get it perfect. So pause your video, fix up the top half, and then start to work on your bottom half.
Now, I think it's good for me to show you when I feel like I haven't got things quite right because it shows that it's never too late to go back and fix something. I feel like my tail is not quite true to what a clownfish tail looks like. I feel like it's a little bit too narrow here. You can see on this one here, it's a little bit more almost triangular. So I'm going to fix that up. Now that's better, I've got a much more triangular tail there. Okay, now we're going to add in some markings and our first set of markings, we're going to use our tail as a guide so that we can add in our first markings. So we're going to follow the line of our tail here. As our first set of markings. Then we're going to use the middle line. Come just over the middle line. You can see there just in front of that middle line there, I've got a curved line. That's our second set of markings. And then we've got one more set of markings towards the front here. And we're gonna go the opposite direction of the ones in the back here. That's one, and two. Now we're ready to add our eye and our mouth. Pencil just broke, I'm just going to get a new one. And then the inside of the eye and a little dot which will be white. And our, when we draw mouths on fish, they're quite frumpy looking mouths. So they take the path of a downward motion. We're going to be using these lines to add in some of the fins and the, so a little bit more detail. So we'll start off using this line here. And on the bottom. And then using this line here, we're going to continue that around. And just to add a little bit more detail into each of those, just going to add a, add a line onto each. And then we're ready to draw a gill down here, which we're going to start with just a really simple C shape. So now we've got the outline of our fish done. What we're going to do is, and I'm going to pause my video while I do this, I'm going to erase the midway lines. And I'm also just going to do a general clean up and fix up. And I'm also going to, if I've done any really dark sketching, I'm going to try to erase some of those lines because we don't want the lead pencil coming through the watercolour at the end of our artwork. So you can see there I've erased all of my... Um, 
the quarter lines and I've just done a little bit of a neaten up of some of the lines that were a bit sketchy. We're just about ready to add colour. I just wanted to point out that on this one here that I used oil pastel for the black parts, which was really good because it provided a bit of a barrier between the colours that I was using. But because we're not in the art room, I'm just going to be using watercolour to do the whole um, clownfish. So we always start with the lightest colour first because the black watercolour is very dominant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the image which, um, which parts of the fish are going to be painted orange. So we're going to be using um, the orange and the yellow and I suggest that you to get the nice bright orange that you use a bit of yellow in your orange. Use lots of water and lots of colour to get a nice rich orange. And you're going to be colouring in the head, this bit here, this bit here. So I'm going to pause my video whilst I do the painting part. Let's unpause here so you can see how thick, how thick my colours are. Just be really careful to stay in the lines. And I'll just pause my video again to finish. I'll just give you a little bit of a progress shot here and there's um, one marking that I forgot to put in and if you've painted this whole back tail orange now it doesn't matter because when you, if you go over it in black once it's dry the black will go straight over it anyway but we do want a, a an extra marking on the tail here which will be black but if you've done that whole tail orange you can go over that little part of the tail black afterwards. Now, as much as we're tempted to finish the fish off now, we are going to leave the black parts until later because um, the black is so dominant that if we added the black now, it does tend to drip into our artwork. So I'm going to be using for the background of my fish a combination of the two blues. Once again, if you did have any oil pastel, you can see on this one here, I did some white bubbles and little um, sketchings around the back before I went over it on blue. If you've got oil pastel, you can do that. I'm not going to do this now because I'm not going to assume that anyone has any oil pastels at home. That is an option if you wanted to do that. So again, we're using lots of colour and lots of water. And we're going to go around the whole background. Once again, I'm going to pause my video so you're not watching me do the whole thing. I'm going to be really careful around the outline of the fish to try and make sure that you can very clearly see where the outline of my water is and the outline of my fish. Um, so good luck. Take lots of time. Pause your video and we'll pop back when I've finished. Um, pause there to give you a little bit of a progress shot. Now don't rush this, it really is taking me quite some time to do it properly. So take your time, like I said, use lots of colour and lots of water. It really is quite tricky to get in around that fish, but take the time to do it. I'm just going to pause my video again until I've finished. So there we go. I've done my 
my background blue and I will be coming back to add a little bit more detail there. Now I'm going to be painting the black parts. And once again, I'll just indicate which parts I'm going to be colouring in painting black. Maybe the back there, the top of this, that, bottom, a little bit here. And we're going to be keeping one, two, three, white. And we're also going to be doing the eye except for the tiny little white eyeball in the outline. So I'm going to pause my video whilst I do some of that. Now just one thing to note is try to um, make sure that your fish is quite dry, just so your colours don't run. There we go, so I've done most of, or almost all of the black bits. If your black isn't quite dark enough, you might want to give it a second coat if it goes, if it starts to go grey when it dries. Try to use quite a thick um, amount of paint for the black so it stands out. Now for this detail here, I'm going to wait for my fish to dry. And I suggest that you do the same because what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to either get an art liner or even a, a pencil. A pencil is absolutely fine or an oil pastel if you have one, anything, just to go over these detail bits here. So I'm going to use an art liner I think today, but you can use a pencil or an oil pastel. So I've just got a Sharpie and you can also go around the whole outside of the black and that's a good opportunity to neaten up any messy edges where you might have, where you might have, want to bring back a little bit of shape. And mine's not quite dry, my black there, otherwise I would have continued on around there. Fish will really start to come together, will really start to take form once we've done all this black outline. Okay, so the only parts that I haven't gone around yet are around the outside of the black and I will do that once it's dry. I might see if some of these are dry enough. There we go, now we're finished going around the outline and you can see that um, that really finishes off the fish nicely. 
price is 100% offshore. I've just got a, a white pencil here. It's actually not quite white. Uh, I'm just going to go over and add some bubbles um, if you don't have a white pencil. This really does not have to be done. You probably can't even tell what I've done there. Okay, so now my fish is complete. And the only thing that I suggest for you to do, so you're ready when we do our final artwork, is if you get a normal playing card or a UNO card, on a separate piece of paper, you can trace around the rectangle and then split that rectangle into the four quarters and you can practice drawing smaller versions of this fish. So you can see there, I've got a little um, art diary with lots of, it's very small, it's got lots of art paper in there. But you can do the same thing by just creating a little rectangle because it's a really good drawing technique to start with a rectangle, section it off into four parts, and then practice drawing the same thing in different sizes. But that's just a suggestion if you feel like doing anything extra or you feel like some art for homework. I know there's some year fours who really love art and would love to do some extra things. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed your first fish tutorial and there'll be plenty more to come, so keep your eye out. And I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye.